Well, kia ora tātou everyone. Uh, Hāori mai ki tēnei panel. It's lovely to have you all here. Uh, my name is Brendan Lane. I'm the uh, campaign organiser for the Let's Do Even Better campaign, which you can see proudly displayed up here. And uh, it's lovely today to have uh, Kim Connolly Stone here, who's the policy director from Internet NZ. And uh, lovely to have you here, Kim. Thank you very much, Brendan. Um, it's a pleasure. Yeah, well, uh, we're super keen uh, to have a bit of a discussion about uh, the internet and access to it because it's a key element of our Aotearoa wellbeing commitment. But I think firstly, we need a little bit of a background. So can you sort of tell us what, what is Internet NZ and you know, what do you guys do? Well, Internet New Zealand, we run the domain name system for this thing called .nz. So in other words, we look after the system that ensures your computers out there can find websites that end in .nz or that you can send emails um, to .nz email addresses. Um, so that's kind of our technical side. And we also have a public good side. Um, and the revenue that we get from wholesaling domain names means we can make community grants and that we can do research and fund research on internet issues. And we also weigh in on public policy or law that affects the internet. So that's kind of roughly what we do. So um, Internet NZ talks about digital inclusion. So what, what is this and, and what does it consider? So you may have heard a few terms used around the place. So some folks talk about digital inclusion or digital exclusion. Digital divides is another one, and digital equity as well. Uh, but essentially, what we're talking about is ensuring that everybody in New Zealand can, if they want to, make the most of this increasingly digital world that we live in. And for us, that means ensuring that everyone's got affordable access to the internet. And, we, um, and when we say this, we tend to call it connectivity. That's what we mean. That's like the internet come into your place. Um, but it's not just about having internet access, that's one part of this digital inclusion picture. It's also about having accessible technology, the skills to use it, and also the motivation and the confidence to get online. If we're looking at New Ze Aotearoa New Zealand, how, how digitally included are New Zealanders? You'd think this is a really easy question to answer, but it's, it's surprisingly hard because we don't have great data um, in New Zealand. But, you know, when we think about access to the internet, there's been some interesting stats that have just come out from the Citizens Advice Bureau based on, you know, the clients that they deal with and help, you know, with online stuff. And that um, suggests there's at least 340,000 households in New Zealand. Um, without wow. internet access. Um, the latest census data that we've got suggests that's 11% um, of households without internet access. I'm not great at maths. I'm not sure if those two things um, line up. Wow. Another really shocking though, statistic that's come out recently, uh, well, not an official statistic, but a study that's been done, is that 31% um, of social housing tenants are not able to internet mm. ex, inter, to access the internet either at home or at work. I mean, if you take work out of that equation, the situation's are a hell of a lot worse. Um, you know, so compare that, you know, to 91% to um, of the general population who can do this. You know, so that's sort of your, um, your internet access side. Then on the other side, skills, you know, how digitally skilled are we? Um, the latest data that we have from the OECD suggests that 45% of New Zealanders, that's only half of us, only have very, very basic internet skills. And that's probably not enough to be getting on in this digital world. No, no. And I think that's one of the things that really made us sit up and take notice was the, the uh, and we'll touch on it a bit later, the number of people who weren't connected as and, and that became apparent because of COVID-19. So... As with the digital, anything that's a divide, there's winners and there's losers. So who are the uh, winners and, and unfortunately, who are the losers? And, and you know, what, what does this look like? Yeah, yeah unfortunately, there are, there are winners and losers, as you put it. 
Now, and some people might think, oh, gee, you know, 11% of people at home without internet access, or maybe that's not so bad. Is New Zealand ahead of other countries? Well, yes, we are, but that's still just really unacceptable for 11% of us to, to not have that access at home. And, and the tricky thing is, it's all about who's overrepresented in that 11%. Um, and, you know, folks most likely not to have that internet access are the New Zealanders on low incomes. Uh, New Zealanders on benefits, folks in rural areas, um, people living in social housing, older New Zealanders, folks with disabilities, and our Māori and Pacifica communities. And what that shows us is we don't have digital equity in New Zealand, and that's just not fair, and that's just not good enough in this day and age. No, I... I think the uh, the thing that's really come apparent to us is that the people who are already facing the inequalities due to ethnicity or gender or whatever, on top of that, then have these digital inequalities as well. Uh, yeah. So then, you know, that that's sort of like the if you like the the back the background the the um, um, baseline. And then on top of that, we add all the, the uh, stuff that's happened with COVID-19. What, what's been the outcome of that? I think, you know, COVID-19 has, for, for a number of people who didn't really get how important the internet was, it's shown them how really important the internet is for everyday life. Um, and especially mm. during those lockdowns that we experienced, um, it's you know allowed people to get the information that they needed to communicate with their family and friends access government services run their businesses um, and work and study um and, you know, and but some of us got to do that because we had internet access you mm. know those who didn't you know didn't get to do any of these things and i think it's been hopefully a catalyzing moment um, for some and hopefully for our government decision makers and whoever it is that becomes you know, the government after this election, you know, doing more online is our future. You know, there's just, you know, there's no other, other future there. Um, and we've also got to bear in mind these COVID style restrictions are becoming on and off for quite a while yet. So we've also yes. got to be, we've got to be thinking about, you know, how are we going to make the internet more accessible to help us deal with this pandemic and also to help us deal with our economic um, recovery? So is it just a case of more money? Well, in, in some cases it is. You know, New Zealand does need to invest more in digital mm. inclusion. It's been... But we've just had the, you know, just had the big digital rollout, the, the big, um, you know, the fibre rollout. Isn't yeah. that enough? <laughs> Well, well, it kind of isn't because you know, before when we were talking about what are those elements of digital inclusion, yeah, sure, having the internet come down your street is, is great. Um, mm -hmm. But if you can't afford to connect to that, if you can't have an affordable yeah. internet plan for your household, um, it doesn't matter. You know, fiber is mm. just going to be... Um, it's just going to sit there. <laughs> yeah, so I think, um, you know, we do... We do need more investment. These things have been a relatively low um, priority area, you know, apart from, you know, that rollout that's been happening and, you know, bouquets, I would say, need to go out to successive governments for keeping building on what each other had done. Um, but, you know, internet infrastructure um, and, and this kind of this connectivity and the skills around it are going to be a real critical enabler for our economic prosperity and our well-being. So we do need to see investment in that. The other thing we need to see is, is a bit more coordination around this um, within government and for those of us who are outside government wanting to help. Um, mm. you know, if we can be a bit more coordinated, we can be more effective in what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you when you introduced uh, Internet NZ, you were talking about your public sphere role. So I guess if, if we're talking about, uh, or we've identified some, some gaps, what you guys must have a plan, surely, to fix this. Funnily enough, Brenda, we do have a plan. Um, it's got five points in it. Uh, 
during that first year, that level four lockdown, uh, we got together with a number of other sort of NGO organizations who really care about digital inclusion and, and came up with a plan with five points that we wanted to what's, communicate. What's the plan called? It is called the Digital Inclusion Five Point Plan, basically. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, we know we, we didn't want oh, people to struggle department. to find it. The comms department went all out on that one, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, and you know, and you never want more than five points. Um, but the important <laughs> the important thing is that we realised when when COVID hit, there were going to be so many people wanting to offer advice to government on what they could do on digital inclusion. And that was going to get a bit noisy and maybe a little bit confusing. We wanted to try and help out a bit by getting a whole lot of us together and offering our reckons together. And we've now got more than, there's more than 60 of us, you know, together um, proposing this, this plan. You know, it's about the most pressing things that government should be doing. It's not everything that government uh, needs to do. Um, but it's you know it's a bit of a it's a bit of a start. Um, it's got five parts. Do you do you want me to tell you about them? Just just smash through them. Alrighty. Uh, so point one is something I've been alluding to a little bit as we've been chatting, and that's about um, affordable connectivity. As I said before, fibre run down runs down your street. If you can't afford a good data plan for your home and enough data for all your family and their needs, um, you know you. It's just, it's not going to work. Um, it's just not on to see people trying to connect to the internet outside libraries using mobile devices. They're not going to get the best benefits um, out of things that in that way. Uh, the second part of the plan is about devices. You know, a lot of people might think, oh, everybody's got a device. But hey, that is, that's not the case. Not everybody can afford them. And as I mentioned before, you know, these things, the smartphones, um, you can't do everything you need to on them. Um, and yeah, what if try got, writing an essay on your mobile yeah. phone. Yeah. <laughs> what if you've got one laptop and a family of six, you know, and people mm. are needing to use it for different, um, different things. So getting, you know, a bit of funding support out there to get devices to folks in need, that's our, that's our second point. And connected to that, there's also a thing about accessibility. You know, um, quite, you know a, lot, a number of New Zealanders um, have disability challenges. Um, and we need to make sure that it's not just any device, it's a device that people can use and it's accessible for them as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, our third point we talk about is support for the newly connected. You know, during COVID, we did see some quite cool stuff out there with a lot of people working real hard, say, for example, through the Ministry of Education to get devices and modems to um, households that didn't have them. But can you imagine if you've never you've never had a modem before, mm. or you've never had a, a laptop? How you know, how do you get this thing going? How do you get it connected? So this idea of support for the newly connected. There's a lot of really great community organisations out there wanting to help people, but they're under resourced. So they do yeah. resource these folks up, and they can help more people. Um, so that's our third point. Um, the fourth one is a little bit, it's a bit of a cheats point because it covers two things in one point. Um, it's about digital skills. Um, first of all, a whole lot of New Zealanders are going to be needing to find new employment because of the economic impacts of COVID-19. Um, and the idea is, can we skill them up, you know, with digital skills to make it easier for them to find jobs and then to get employment perhaps in industries in workplaces that use digital technology, allowing people to get into, into you know, perhaps better areas of employment than they might have done otherwise. So didn't we see a bit of this, didn't the government put out a program to help uh, smaller business get online and, and do yeah. online um, selling? Yeah, so that's the second part of it. So one part's, oh, you know, individuals sorry. getting jobs. Stole your thunder, sorry. And that, but we haven't seen any money for that bit. But what we have right. started to see from the current government um, is about, I think, it, you know, 10 or 15, 15 million basically going mm. into programs to help small businesses get more online and more digitally savvy. So that's, mm. that's really good to see. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of it. Heard of, uh, in my exploration of this area, I've heard of a lot of good, good feedback on that program. So, yeah. cool. um, and they're just, you know, they're getting started um, and figuring out how to spend that money. Um, so hopefully, we'll start to see it distributed soon. Um, mm. And then point so your five, fifth point, fifth, yeah, point. fifth point is 
um, what we call internet resilience. Um, so as we mentioned before, successive governments, you know, really nice. They're building that rollout of the broadband and um, yeah, the fiber, the rural broadband, the mobile black spots, um, all that sort of stuff. Um, but there's still parts of the country um, who we haven't got to yet. So that still needs to happen. And the thing is, it's almost like you've got to start going around again because the quality of the internet connections that we mm. need, that the, the bar is always raising. Um, mm. So mm. there's still a lot of investment um, to, be, to be doing there. So those, those are our, our five points. Cool. Well, thank you. Um, Kim, we've got some, we've got a couple of questions. And firstly, uh, from uh, anonymous, anonymous attendee, we'll just call them AA for short. How is the pandemic not enough for government to isolate people in digital need? As in, wasn't this a good enough chance for the government to find out who's excluded and then take more action? I think I'm anonymous attendee. I would agree with you. Um, now, when we, when we saw this hit, um, we thought, oh my goodness, if there's any time we're going to start to see really good um, jumps in the levels of investment and digital inclusion, it's, it's now. And our expectations were raised quite a bit and then a little bit dashed, actually. Um, recently, the government bought out its, its action plan for digital mm -hmm. inclusion, and it did have some good stuff. It's a bit so quiet, though. Yeah. Well, there, yeah was there any quietly. sort of like, you know, big fanfare or something? I don't think there was because it came out after that period for announcements. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. So, you know, we did see um, some money for digital skills in there, like, you know, a lot of money going to libraries to help people out, some stuff for community funding, that small business stuff we just talked about. And nothing, um, fortunately, on the affordable connectivity side except mm. an offer to talk about it. And, you know, we'll take government up on that um, for sure. Um, and see if we can get something done for next year. But just, yeah, shame to not see it now. Yeah. Yeah. There's just a question come up again uh, from AA around uh, political parties and what they're proposing. So the, um, if, can you give us sort of a summary? Sure can. And it, it won't take too long, actually, because um, the digital technology policies of the parties have been a bit slow um, coming out this year. Um, we don't have them for everyone yet. Um, and what I'll do now is I'll just give you a summary just of the digital inclusion bits um, of those policies. The Green Party, they were first out, of, out um, and we were really um, pleased to see that what the Green Party is proposing to do is to implement the five-point plan on digital inclusion. So all of those elements. So, so that's, their, um, that's their proposal there. Well, it's pretty straightforward, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and as you can imagine, um, we think that's quite quite a good set of policies, uh, funnily enough. Um, secondly, the National Party, about a week or two ago, released its technology policy. Um, really chuffed there to see they're talking about $1 billion for the infrastructure upgrades um, for internet. So that's about getting connectivity around the country um, but it wasn't talking about affordable connectivity. So it's more about, you know, getting the pipes around the place. So um, nothing mentioned on that in that policy, uh, but hopefully um, that could be something they'd consider. Um, they did also talk a bit about doing stuff on digital skills, um, but more at the tertiary level. Um, and the thing about digital skills is you want to be building your pipeline and giving everybody access to that, not just folks who are lucky enough to get into tertiary education. Then Labour Party, they haven't issued, as I checked, the last time I checked this afternoon, they hadn't issued um, a policy, but I guess what we can do is look at what they've got in train. They do have a blueprint for digital inclusion. It's a document that says this is really important. And I just mentioned before answering that question, some of the things um, that are in there, the action plan and some of the recent money that has been announced. Mm, okay. And just have a look in through. Uh, okay. So if, if, we're, um, if we're looking at how do we, um, because of the, uh, the internet, uh, Access is a big part of our Aotearoa wellbeing commitment. If we're looking at the political parties, which one, if they've, you know, if you were to consider which policy 
they, um, you would implement if you were the government, what would be your one big thing that you would implement that would you think that would uh, really help the, the connectivity side? Of it? If I got to choose one thing, it would be affordable internet access through public housing. Um, right. Because you know, at the moment, it is it can be quite tricky to get onto an internet plan when you're actually in rented accommodation, which is which is public housing. And the idea is, yeah, let's get that connectivity hooked up to those those that housing, you know, standard, and let's offer affordable internet plans for everyone who's a tenant um, of public housing. You know, folks um, who qualify for public housing have already proven that they qualify for government support. Um, yeah, getting, getting that done would be amazing. Um, and, you know, there was, as I mentioned, there was a little bit of a hint about that in the government action plan and, you know, any other party who could do that, that would be fantastic. Wonderful. So I've just got a question here from Charlie as well. Uh, and uh, I think they might have missed the um, missed the beginning of it where you talked a little bit about how Internet NZ got its funding. Uh, we are an NGO, uh, but we do generate our own income. So we um, we sell, we wholesale domain names. You know, and by, by wholesaling those domain names, we make some income. And so we're very fortunate to do that. And then we're able to use that for our public good activities. Excellent. So, you, but you don't receive any uh, government funding per se? No, we don't. No, so uh, that's cool. So you can have that separation yeah, uh, and yeah. be a fearless defender of the internet and its access. Exactly. We like it that Wonderful. way. All right. Uh, we've got another question here. Uh, can we also propose rental plans most internet plans are long-term commitments that don't work in a transient housing environment yeah that's that's a really a really great point um you know we obviously we can't just turn this idea of affordable connectivity and public housing on straight away we'd obviously need to spend um a decent amount of time finding out what the needs um of, mm. of the tenants are and asking what would work for them yeah, so that's yeah. a, it's a great idea yeah. Hey, look, um, unless there's any other questions, I think uh, we might call that quits. We'll just give any, any last takers. No. All right. Well, excellent. Thank you so much, Kim, for coming along and having a chat with us about the, uh, the uh, often, uh, um, I'll say, forgotten part of our infrastructure. Uh, and yet it's so important in this day and age. And I think, um, as you said before, the, the COVID uh, crisis has really uh, exposed how sometimes we don't really know a lot about where we actually are in the country in regards to this. And I think uh, it's also um, been a little bit frustrating to see how um, down the list of priorities it has been with the political parties when they've been releasing its policy, but uh, policies. But Thank you so much. Keep up the great work and uh, we're really looking forward to keep talking with you about how we um, can uh, keep our idea of, uh, of the internet access being part of the Aotearoa wellbeing commitment as well. So cool. Thank you so much. And thanks, Brendan. And thanks to the PSA, you know, for really picking up on what an important issue this is for New Zealand. Yeah, thank you. Good night, everyone.